And here we have the finals of the second season of the Real Chess League. Lena Kuno versus Marco Rayleigh, FM Marco Rayleigh. Lena Kuno knocked out Twitch streamer Angelica Chessborn and Fide Master Marco has beaten his friend, International Master Adrian Schnitzer in a very sharp and tense match. This is game two. And with the white pieces, we have Lena Kuno, who's the hardest worker in the room. She trains tactics every day and works out to stay in shape for her bouts on the chessboard. Lena is a very good calculator and tactics are her home turf. Her idol player is the current world champion, Magnus Carlsen. And with the black pieces, we have the strong Fide Master and Blitz Specialist from Germany, Marco Rele. He's well known for his very sharp openings and dangerous opening traps. He's streaming together with I am Adrian Schnitzer under the name Chess Hobbits 99. And we're off. Epic stare down. You see that trophy right behind the board there. They're ready to go. Championship time. We have E4 from Lena and uh, E5 from Marco. Knight of three in response. Let's see what we got. We have Knight of six. The tricky, the fun stuff, the Petrov. And Knight C3 just declining all kind of nonsense. Knight to C6. And we have a four knights, which can definitely transpose into a scotch. That's exactly what happens here. We now have a scotch four knights here, which is a very theoretical opening. And Bishop B4 happens. The scotch game is a very, very sharp and kind of an open position fun game to play for both sides. In fact, um, if you're very accurate and actually after E takes D5, quick castles for Ricky one check. Not sight taking the other pawn on C6. Just developing quick play from these guys. Quick play. Queen F3. Marco thinks about it. What's the move here? He's like, uh, what do I do? Do I allow captures on F6 and damage to my structure and take the bishop here? Or do I play for something more? What is the move here? In fact, Lena moving very fast, very good. Actually, in the last game or in the first round or first game with the Marco, um, she was moving uh, fast, but not fast enough as she was down on time. And that was definitely her problem in the last game, which led to, uh, to mistakes as time should be used as a piece as well with your pieces on the board. H3 has happened after a Rook E8, putting a Rook on a file with a smile, open file by that as well. And uh, H3, stopping any Bishop G4 ideas. H6, kicking the Bishop or questioning the Bishop. In fact, are you gonna go back to H4, which looks pretty nice, long diagonal action there. Keeping the pressure does allow G5. G5 is definitely risky. And if I back the Bishop up to G4, there is a G4 move, but we could just capture and play Queen F4. So in fact, bishop h4 will be a very, very annoying move. I'm always a fan of doing that, but you could also just damage the structure and go into an endgame where you're not really sure yet. She's actually probably thinking about that now. Do I go into the endgame where his structure is just bad? C6 pawns gross, double pawns on the f-file, but he does have the two bishops. Or do I play bishop h4 and keep the long range uh, annoyance here of the bishop, especially with the pressure on f6? Let's see what she comes up with. And she captures on f6 he captures right back immediately everything's forced here capture capture and capture back 
We have a trade with the damage of the structure on the uh, F file with the F pawn. So black should be very careful here on how if he trades, when and how he trades, because any the more trades that happen, the worse the position will get for black due to the damage of the structure where white has just a very nice structure, no structural weaknesses, no problems here. And as his Lena's move, it's doing quite well on the clock so far here. Uh, let's see what she comes up with. Bishop takes c3 is quite annoying, um, damaging the structure right back. So she looks like she's going to move it, and she does. She removes the knight and goes to e2, which is very strong. We like knight e2. Also have aspirations of playing knight f4 and knight h5. Well, attacking the weak the weak pawn there. And uh, what better piece to attack weak pawns than a tricky knight? So knight f4, knight h5 is a very, very big plan here attacking the f6 pawn and if f5 happens then the light square bishop for black becomes pretty gross as it's locked inside uh, behind the pawns on c6 d5 and f5 weak pawns should be attacked and pressured so knight g3 or knight f4 could be a huge possibility next let's see what marco chooses and calmly plays bishop to d7 just saying i'm going to develop and also defend the c6 pawn at the same time so knight d4 does not come with tempo Let's see what happens here. So bishop d7 is on the board here. Maybe knight to f4. c3 and bishop f8 guys c3 is on the board here attacking the bishop and he backs it up to f8 he also had moves like bishop to d6 bishop d6 was a move i was anticipating just to stop um the knight from swinging into f4 or g3 but bishop f8 is more of a quiet move here maybe something like bishop g7 could happen uh and next and paying f5 maybe attacking the b2 pawn it's kind of weak here the bishops have free range to kind of do things here maybe bringing the rook to the file there it is rookie one yeah just put the rook on e1 that's always usually a good plan is put the rooks to the files with smiles And Ricky 5, so he's going for something a little bit more positional here. I actually like this move a lot, Ricky 5. What it's doing is activating the rook. It's also saying, hey, I'm going to double my rooks. Dub on the file. Putting two rooks there, it's going to be pretty, pretty nice. Putting some pressure along the e-file there. And also getting activated. My piece on f8 or a8, the rook over there, is not doing anything. So swinging the other rook over, bringing his brother or his buddy over to have some fun on the e-file is going to be a lot of fun for black here. White has to figure out what to do. And we didn't choose the knight f4 option. So our pieces aren't the, the greatest here. You always have to figure out where do we want to put our pieces at and what is the, the best future for this piece? And knight e2, the knight has been on e2 and it's kind of just chilling there. We have to probably move this knight because this, this double is going to be extremely annoying. And she's thinking here, doing quite well on time here. So let's see what she does. She makes a move. She's thinking about it. She's about to make a move here. Let's see what she comes up with. Knight d4, put a knight in the center of the board. Also, this would be an excellent move and be super cool and we would just love to stay there. Now, of course, we want to reroute anyway, maybe something like knight f3, but c5 is very, very annoying. In fact, he doubles the rooks first, saying, hey, are you going to capture and allow my, my, my structure to, to strengthen after f takes e5? And she plays king f1, nice move here, centralizing the king. And we say centralizing because the king is going to be closer to the center. If we have a massive trade of everything, rook takes e1, rook takes, and rook takes again on e1. The, our king on e1 is going to be closer than the counterpart on g8 that is not uh, as close to the center, which is very important, especially when you reach end games. And again, these structure weaknesses that black has Will become evident and not easy to defend as more pieces come off of the board marco on the move here after king f1 let's see what he does c5 
c5 kicking the knight so the knight actually can now move to f3 you also have 92 which isn't the greatest here but you can also make maybe a move of uh the sort of uh bishop to b5 or which is a pretty cool move knight to c2 as well knight to c2 is a different kind of move See what she chooses yeah knight b5 will be a blunder she plays bishop b5 that is correct great job bishop to b5 bishop b5 is a is a very strange but working move we think here because there's tactics involved is an eagle a stronger threat now if this works she'll be fine and, and she'll be able to go to an in-game which is what she really kind of wants here especially with the double pawns and the, and the structure weaknesses that black has but if it doesn't work she's gonna be in some trouble here let's see what happens she takes d4 is wild this could get wild guys this could get very very wild this should be five hey gotta go for it why not And C takes D4, Bishop takes D7. So we're going for, it. oh, Rook D8. Yeah, that's a move we actually did not consider or think that it was there. Maybe Rook E7, of course, as well. Kind of the same realm here. But Rook D8 attacks the Bishop. C3 is now not hanging, but there is going to be a uh, liquidation in a way for my, my pieces of black hair. I'm feeling a little bit better as my structure isn't as bad anymore. I still have the double pawns here, but I have some activity with my Rooks. Opposite color Bishops here doesn't mean that this is going to be a draw. It could be draw-ish due to the opposite color the bishops one being light squared and the other being dark squared of course the problem here is that they when when one is attacking the other it's hard to defend because the light square bishop can't do as much so bishop to g4 happens and there we go d takes c3 and b takes c3 so we're capturing on c3 there's a weak pawn on c3 now but black still has the weak pawn pawns or the double pawns on the f file time is quite even here pretty good let's see what he comes up with here and oh reaching for the d pawn and pushes it and activating whoa whoa little indecision d4 and he sets it there and says okay we're gonna do d4 here right okay right d4 is on the board little chatter there little chatter d4 is on the board and let's see what happens We have a capture on d4 and rook takes d4 as well so lots of activity activity looking great with the rooks here now let's figure out what we're going to do next but white actually has uh some trouble with activity in fact if white is not able to consolidate in fact the, the weak pawn on a2 could be a problem yeah we have weak pawns on the f file for black but those are easily defended with a move like king to g7 or something of that sword let's see what she comes up with four minutes here okay still doing quite well on time not too bad here not too bad but we do have something we have to think about here the bishop could come to c5 and attack f2 when uh white's bishop is not doing the most so we we have rook to d1 here challenging the rook and rook to a4 attacking the a2 pawn rook to d2 could be a blunder rook d2 after rook d2 there's rook takes e1 king takes e1 and bishop b4 for the score gg start a new one the bishop is pinning the rook wow yikes so rook d2 is not a move let's see what she does she's thinking about it whoa rook to d2 and puts it right back and says wait a second that is not a move here scrunches up her face there and says what am i doing right so she reaches for the rook and she's moving it. Rook D2 is on the board again. Okay, maybe not this time. Maybe not. It's just not a move. Let's not do that to ourselves. This is a family channel. Let's see what happens. And it's shaking her head there. Has to move the rook. Let's see where she goes.
Okay, rook to d7 is on the board here. Rook d7 attacking the f7 pawn. Attacking the f7 pawn. And then rook takes a2. So rook takes a2. Okay, f2 could be a problem with bishop to c5. Black is now up a pawn, but he has double pawns on the f file. Rook takes c5, f takes c5. F the F pawn is hanging. Bishop h5, what a move. What a move. Very nice move there. Bishop a5, bishop h5 is really nice. Now, if you play f6 or f5 right now, you will be checked and you lose the rook on a2. And you can't defend this pawn. So what does he do? Maybe he maybe he moves the rook. Maybe he moves the pawn. Moving well, you can't move the F pawn. So you only have a choice here. He does have an in-between check, an intermediate check. And there it is. He actually plays it. And after the king moves, we have f6. Very smart. Putting it on a dark square as well. Let's see what she does here. She's getting low on time. Marco in the think tank. A5. A5 is on the board here. So we're going to push this pawn as far down as we possibly can and try to use it. But this isn't technically one yet. This isn't, isn't technically one yet. Bishop to F3. So Bishop F3 trying to do what we can. Maybe Bishop to D5 check and Rook to A1. She shakes her head there. Now, of course, the Bishop can, the Bishop and the Rook, if, if connected, can also stop the pawn from queening on the A2 square. So you have to be very, very careful there. What did we have? Bishop check. There's a check. King G7 probably should be next. There's a check on the board. So the check is very important as she needs to connect the two pieces, the rook and the bishop together. So maybe rook to a seven trying to help here. Let's see what happens. There's king g6 as he looks a little bit, just checking, making sure I'm not hanging anything. King f6 will be a fatal blunder to rook f7 and taking on f8 here. So black can still fight for more as this is a game where opposite color bishops are very, very important if you can coordinate the pieces together because usually white's only fighting with one of the pieces being probably the rook here and the bishop can't help in the defense of what could happen. Let's actually see what happens here. She's getting dangerously low on time, dangerously low, almost at a minute here as she's thinking about what is what she should do here. G4 is on the board. So G4 carving some squares. If F4 happens, there could be a bishop E4 check. Um, checking the king here and trying to use the rook and the bishop. But you actually can't use just two pieces. In fact, you need more of them. You can't just do it with the bishop and the rook alone here. She could be fighting as long as there is some accuracy here and speed. Because she is getting very, very low on time here. Marco is trying to figure out what to do. Let's see what he comes up with. You could just push the pawn. You may be able to activate the bishop. He does actually. He goes for activating the bishop with bishop to b4. With a rookie one check. Which is not generally doing anything yet. But e4 could shut down the game. And after e4, rookie one will be mate. 
look at that. So there has to probably be a capture on F5 at some point to draw the king out and maybe being able to uh, gobble the pawn on E4, but definitely getting out of the way of this checkmate that could happen after E4. She's under a minute, about 40 seconds left. She got to come up with a move. Let's see what she does. Rook to a7, uh, getting behind the pawn here, that's probably not going to do it here. e4 can still be played. And if e4 is played, e4 does threaten mate with rook e1, check and mate. Let's see, it looks like he's going for e4 is on the board. She should take on f5 if pawn takes f5. Uh, king takes f5. Rook check on a6. Wait, pawn takes f5, king takes. Sorry, there is no rook a6. So rook f7, what does she do? f3, she just says f3. I'm just going to get out of the way. Now, we might have a nice sequence here from Marco. 13 seconds, by the way. No time on the clock for Lena here. No time. In fact, you can almost throw in any kind of checks here. Don't do this. This is not L online chess where you play the checks that don't work just to try to, uh, to flag them. You know, rook a2 would be a fatal error, but you could take on f3. You could also just play it correctly here with rook e1. Looks like the best move. And after king f2, you could push the pawn a little bit further with e3 check. So much time for Marco here, up a full two minutes at least. And he's reaching for the rook and there it is, rook e1. Check king f2 out of the way, e3 play quickly here. And king to g2, stepping out of the way. She gets that two seconds back. So 13 seconds, get the two second increment. Joining right back, but 13 seconds and only getting two seconds every move. And you have to be accurate defending like a monster here. Very, very hard to play this game. Very, very hard. In fact, you could play e2 here. He plays bishop c5 with the idea of even a move like rook to g1 check is a real possibility. What a move. Oh my goodness. Rook g1 is so cool. And then after king takes, there's e2 threatening queen right after. Two seconds, one second. C flags. And he points at the clock and says, that's it. You're out of time. Wow. And that is it. A 2-0 lead for Marco. In fact, that is the end there. And the champion of the Real Chess League Season 2. Shout out to FM Fide Master Marco Raylo. Great job and congratulations. Was a tough match. Um, yeah, I had some chance. Yeah, yeah Bishop B five was was a great move. Mm -hmm. I think after I play C five, you play Bishop B five, and then uh, yeah, the end game is a little bit mm -hmm. better for you, I think. Um, but okay, you you have to go for the win, mm -hmm. and then sometimes I it's difficult. Fight, yeah. Maybe it would be a draw, but I. I cannot make it draw because then I lost, so I have to play for a win. And, yeah. Yes. How to play for a win if this was difficult, yeah. Yes, and Rook D2 would, would have been a blunder if you <laughs> saw it. And then, but after Rook D8, if, if the. Yeah, it couldn't play. Yeah, you, you get some counter put. I thought I get some counter play with F7, but. Uh, yes. yes. Threatening yeah. and yeah. then to take the Rook, but I've got this check mm -hmm. and then play F6. And then no problem. Yeah. Yeah, I liked your idea if you're a pawn down, then you're mm -hmm. fighting for the, for my king, but yeah, probably wasn't enough. Yeah, yeah maybe the opening is too, yeah. too drawish. Yeah, yeah. But okay, I was happy with it. <laughs> <laughs> so, thanks a lot. Nice game. Thanks nice you fight. And a hard fight. <laughs> both, both of the matches. <laughs> Very, very well done by Marco. Pretty flawless game, actually. Everything he did, he did in flow. Everything he did made a ton of sense. Winning the first game of their match, Adrian has got a big, big task in front of him to come back and equalize. But for the moment, Marco with a very, very convincing victory. Well done to Marco. And the game is exciting. Five seconds, both players even in time, moving on increment. Here's a check on the board. What an ending. I don't know if we can call that ending anything but insane. Uh, and looking at the position on the board, 
had Adrian had enough time to get that move played, he would still have been lost because Marco had just created a queen rook battery and they would be mate on the E1 square. And he goes for rook f1 and she was slightly surprised there. Eyes kind of bulged a little bit there, reaches for the pawn and takes it. And queen f3 responds immediately with queen f6 now being the move. And remember, queen f7 was the response last time, but now that would be a fatal error. And now she's under 20 seconds, in fact, under 15, now under 10. 10 seconds here on the clock, seven, six, five, four, three, two. And she makes a move with two seconds on the clock. In fact, there is increment. So she gets those two seconds right back. Of course, uh, now queen uh, over to b7. Oh, and mate is on the board. She hung mate. Wow. Queen f3, queen e6, queen takes b7, rookie eight, queen g7, mate. Wow. What a game.